Hi everyone, today we're going to be wiring a Telecaster Deluxe. <laughs> Hi everyone, Six String Supplies. Today we're going to be wiring up a 72 Telecaster Deluxe pit guard. Um, it's been a while since we did a video for various reasons, but um, time to crack on with this one. So, the customer has sent uh, his pit guard into us. Um, it's a typical humbucker, two volume, two tone, your typical Telecaster Deluxe pit guard. Uh, he's also sent the pickups, which are bare knuckle. I'll go through them in a quick second. Um, as always, I'll just give a very quick overview of the equipment we're using. So like I say, the customer's actually sent his pit guard and his pickups. So all he's actually buying from, from Six String Supplies is the pre-wired Telecaster Deluxe Harness and Switch, which is what we're actually going to be wiring up today. He's just asked me to put in his pit guard, um, pickups and everything else. Uh, so I've got the same reliable soldering station as the Hakko. A triple eight D temperature controllable, uh, some soldering tip cleaner. I'm going to be using some tinned copper as the ground wire, and it will be used on the switch as well. We'll show you that. Um, possibly the best solder I've ever used. Uh, obviously, when we're selling these products commercially, we're not allowed to use lead in the European market. Uh, so this is. Oh, there we go. I'll turn it around. Wrap it online. It is expensive, but 500 grams, half a kilo is probably just under a year's worth. Get through one of these a year, approximately. And it's got 3.9% silver, as you can see, AG 3.9. So that's a very high silver content, which does make it easier to work with. Um, so for the actual electronics itself, themselves, excuse me. So we've got a switchcraft right angle toggle switch. Uh, this is what you'd find typically in a Telecaster de Deluxe, but also in a Gibson SG and one or two other models. So we're gonna be using that one. We've got four 500K solid shaft CTS pots. Uh, these are from Mojo, Ch Mojo Tone in the US. Braided wire, approximately three, three and a half foot. Again, this will be predominantly used on the switch. I think the pickups have got braided wire as well. Uh, a couple of snake oil, 0.022 capacitors, typical for humbuckers. I'm also going to be using two treble bleeds. These are 1000 PF orange drops with a 150k resistor. So that would be our treble bleed. Um, if you watched any of our videos, you'll know we like to use rubber tubing. Not essential at all, uh, just something that we always like to use. Uh, and obviously your, your typical tools such as wire cutters and pokies and that sort of thing. Uh, the pickups themselves, they're bare knuckle. Um, for those of you watching in the US, the bare knuckle are without doubt the, the biggest um, well-known boutique pickup winder in the UK market. There are so many pickup winders in the UK now. We are truly sport for, for choice. Personally, I've never, never ever used bare knuckle pickups myself. Um, but I know they're good, just you can tell from their reputation. Um, these are... I don't know what that is, VH2, I think that says VH2, yeah, or Hill, anyway. Uh, this is a typical humbucker, which the customer's asked me to put in the bridge position. Um, and I'll just take this out, you can tell um, these are stunningly, beautifully made. Um, you've got nice and great base plate there. So we're putting that in the bridge, and the neck, I believe, Whilst it is actually a bridge pickup, not just from the picture, but it is marked on the box as bridge. Oh no, it's marked as neck. Oh well. Uh, it's a humbucker size P90. So that's going to be going in the neck position. Right then. So we're going to do this in several little steps. So we're going to start off by doing the switch and the, the parts, the harness itself, before we move on to putting in the pickups. And the jack, I'm not sure if I'm going to connect the jack or not, or I'll have to leave that to the customer. But we'll work on that as we get through it. So we're going to start off by doing the switch, and then we'll move on to the pots and everything else. So let's crack on with that. So if you watched our video on wiring an SG or an ES335 or 
a Les Paul toggle switch. I'll put the links below. Um, it's, it's actually going to be exactly the same as the switch for your Telecaster Deluxe. So typical Switchcraft toggle switch. Now this is the L-shaped version, right angle model, which uh, they all function exactly the same. So these two lugs at the bottom here, if I turn it that way, these two are the output to the jack socket. The, the big fat one in the middle is the ground. And either side, you've got your neck and your bridge. So this will go to the neck volume and that will go to the bridge volume, uh, the input lug on each respective volume lug. And obviously you've got your the toggle itself allowing you to select between the two. So like I say, if you have watched the others, it's exactly the same, um, but I'll go through it obviously. Sometimes if you're doing something like this, it's nice to elevate the elevate your work, just use an empty or used tape roll, uh, just a little template with the switch goes in the middle. So we are, like I say, I'm gonna be using a little bit of tinned copper. And we're going to thread that through the ground lug of the switch. Just going to turn that temperature up. So as you can see, I've just threaded that through the ground lug and we're just going to solder it into place. Now because that lug of the switch is approximately two to three times thicker than the others, it's going to require a bit more heat. So if you've got a temperature adjustable soldering iron, time to turn it up. So I'll heat up the, the joint and flow in the solder from the other side. Just cut off that excess. And if you're using rubber tubing like I do, no, absolutely not essential whatsoever. It's just a habit we've all I've always used. Just cover it up and shrink it down with a heat gun or a cigarette lighter or there we go. Next we can take our braided wire. Now I've already pre-cut this into individual lengths so you want three lengths uh, this is approximately a foot and a half probably closer to two foot which is way more than you need but it's always better to have a bit more than you don't want to be too short on length do you uh, so we're just going to pull back the braided wire like so. Push back the inner cloth wire. I've got very sweaty hands so it's a bit frustrating. Oy, there we go. Uh, so we're just going to hook the inner cloth wire there, the signal wire, through to the the lugs either side of that ground lug. You can now turn your soldering iron down. I'm just going to leave it as it's nice and quick. Let it cool naturally, try not to move the wire. Push the cloth back down, and then exactly the same. Cover it a little bit of rubber tubing it if you so wish.
and then we're going to do exactly the same for the other side. So I'm just going to push that tubing back over. Shrink it down. Repeat the process, excuse me. Push back the outer braid, push back the black cloth to reveal the inner cloth wire, as I like to call it. Uh, we're going to feed it through, bend it around. So, a lot of people will criticize this. I always, on the switch, I always bend that wire around to give a mechanical connection. A lot of people don't like it because it, it is a nightmare should you have to replace the switch in the future or we'll change a couple of wires the reality is these are switchcraft if you need to replace a switchcraft switch you're better off just paying the 20 quid or 20 dollars for a new one because you'll get a lot of long life long lasting switches indeed push that cloth back down what i don't like to do is bend stuff around bend wires around uh, on potlucks although you will see me doing it occasionally but hey, everyone's got their own style. Some like it, some don't like it. I just always like to have a secure mechanical connection before an electrical connection. So, uh, exactly the same, push the cloth down and shrink it down. And the final length of braided wire is to be used on these two lugs at the bottom, which is the output to the jack socket. And you need to push them, push them together, squeeze, you can use some pliers if you want, because you need the wire to go through both lugs. So I always tend to just squeeze them together a little bit. Doesn't matter if you don't, it's just as long as the wire does go through both of them. So exactly the same, push your cloth back down. Feed it through both. Again, I'll tend to bend that round. I know not everyone likes that, but. And then solder it in place. All good, let it cool. Try not to move it as I just did accidentally. Push the cloth back down. And again, I am going to cover this one. Well, I do anyway, but I would recommend covering this one with some tubing because that is the hot signal and you don't want any of that braided wire coming into contact. So push that all the way down, get it as far down as you can. And just shrink it. Okay, so when you've done all that, you need to effectively ground all three of the braids, which is what this snippet of uh, tinned wire that we put in the beginning is for. However, before we do that, you'll see I've got three different colours of rubber tubing here. Now this is simply because once you've got them all tied together, you need to be able to identify which one goes to the volume control, which one goes to the bridge control, and which one goes to the jack. So I've had this system from day one, just the three colours, yellow, red, and blue. Red, for me, is neck, so I'll just tie that onto the bottom of the wire at the other end of it. 
and then just tie it into a knot. You don't want to shrink it down because you've got to cut it off anyway. Uh, so just tie it into a loose knot to stop the red falling off. Blue is for the bridge. Remem remembered by the bees, blue bridge. And obviously once you've got two on, you don't need one for the third. Um, because the one that goes to the jack will be the one with no colour on it, but I'll do it anyway. So yellow, for me, is output to the jack. All good. And then once you've done that, we are simply wrapping the tinned copper around all three wires. You want it nice and tight, but not too tight. Nice and snug, I guess, is the way to call it. You don't want it loose whatsoever, because we're going to have to solder these all together. Cut off the excess. Bend it down, and then we've just got to Sold that down to place, and that is our switch done. So I'm just going to move that to get a better angle. It's the various ways of doing this. Try to keep it on camera. Do the same from the other side. All good. So that is our switch done. That's ready to get mounted into the pit guard. Next, we're going to move on to the harness itself, the two volume and two tone controls. Okay, so with the switch done, we're gonna move on to the volume and tone controls. So I'll just put your pots in your pit guard. Now, this is very similar to Les Paul wiring in the sense you've got uh, two volumes and two tones, uh, a volume and a tone for each pickup. Uh, so what we're gonna do, because the spacing is a little bit tighter than your typical Les Paul, I've got the the lugs of each pot facing inwards slightly. And the first thing we're going to do, as you would do with any volume control, is just to ground the outer lug of each volume control. So that's this one on the volume, and one on the furthest away uh, on this volume there. So we're just going to ground them by filling the eyelet with solder. And again on this one. And when it's cooled, I'm just going to bend it back onto the pot casing, like so, and solder that in place. You can of course just use a little jumper wire connecting the eyelet to the back of the pot, whatever is easiest for you. And do exactly the same on the neck volume.
Perfect. Now we're just going to have a, using the tinned copper, we're just going to have a, a continuous ground wire connecting the four pots together exactly as we do in the Les Paul wiring video. Uh, so take your tinned copper and again, it's always a good idea to use some tape, just the tape. Got some Gorilla tape here, duct tape, just to take the wire in place to stop it moving around. And we're just going to solder it down to on the top of all four pots. So heat up the joint. There we go. I'm just going to do exactly the same all the way around onto every single pot. Excuse me. Nice and simple, just heat up the area, let it heat, heat up for a bit before you flow your solder in. like so and the final one exactly the same heat up the uh, the area first There you go. Next, we're just going to connect the, the volume controls to the tone controls, add the capacitors and the travel bleeds, and then we're ready to move on to the pickups. Okay, so to connect the tone pots to the volume pots, we're just going to use a little bit of cloth wire that connects from the output lug, which is the middle one on the tone controls, to the input lug, which is the one on the bottom these bottom two of each volume control. So it's going from the input to the volume to the middle lug of the tone control. So you can use whatever wire you want. I'm just using literally a couple of short lengths of cloth wire. I'm just gonna feed it in through the, 
through the hole, try to. Let's clear my soldering tip. Let it cool naturally, don't blow on it. And when it's cooled, I'm just gonna connect it, like I say, to the input lug of the volume control. Like so, I'm doing exactly the same on the neck, tone and volume control. So we're going middle lug of the tone. To the input of the volume. Probably could have done with a slightly longer jumper wire. Okay, sorted. That's the main control sorted. Now we're just going to put the snake oil capacitors, the tone caps, in, followed by the channel blades, and then we can move on to hooking up the pickups. Okay, so the capacitors, uh, very simply, they get soldered onto this lug of each tone control. So if you're looking at it from a bird's eye point of view, the two lugs on the, the bottom here, so this one and this one. So one end of your cap goes into each respective lug and the other end goes to the ground. So we'll put them onto the size of the pot casing there. So because it's humbuckers I'm using 0 0.022 uh, UF you will see a lot of diagrams using 0 0.047 it is quite frankly all about personal choice so I'd use whatever your ears prefer. So I'm just going to feed that through. Let it cool naturally as always. And the other end, we are just going to solder onto the pot casing. I'm just going to cut that to length. Oops. 
just going to trim the excess. So you can put the, you can ground the cactus anywhere as long as it's ground obviously. So it's easier to put it onto the top of the pot. You can put it onto the side as a lot of people do. I'm just going to put them on the top there. All good, I'm gonna do exactly the same with the net controls. And again, we're just going to put this to ground. Just going to trim that. Okay, sorted. So the final thing we're going to do is just pop these little treble bleeds over the inputs and the output lugs of each volume control. Okay, so the treble bleeds simply go get soldered into the input and the output of each volume control. Now you don't have to put a treble bleed in, uh, it's obviously optional. Sometimes, you know, depending on your, your pickups and what your ear is like and what your general preferences are, it generally tends to retain a little bit more treble as you're rolling back the volume. Sometimes, more so with single coil pickups, to be honest, you can get a slight muddy tone as you're rolling back the volume. So the idea of a treble bleed is to counteract that. Just reheat that solder. And put it in. I'm doing exactly the same on the middle plug. Just like that. But obviously bear in mind that we do need to connect our pickups and the bridge uh, switch, excuse me, to volume control. And there we go, we're just going to do exactly the same 
with the volume. Neck volume control, so just heat up that solder. Okay, so we've got the harness done, we've got the switch done. Now it's time to put in the pickups and connect everything together. Okay, so I've put the pickups in off camera and as you can see, I'm just using a an old T-shirt here just to protect the nickel covers of the pickups from being scratched or anything underneath on the table. Uh, right, so nice and simple to put in. When you're working with a braided wire, exactly the same as we, the same situation with the switch. So you've got um, the inner cloth wire and the outer braid. The outer braid is the ground, which we need to ground to the top of the, the pot casing here. And the inner cloth wire of each pickup is the hot signal, which we're gonna solder into the volume output of each solder lug. So that is the one where the yellow wire is connected to the input lug, the one with the yellow wire and the treble bleeding. So another thing when working with braided wire, a lot of people do struggle grounding it to the pot casing. So one of the ways I do it is to take a pair of scissors, cut up the braid. So you're essentially separating the braid and then you twist them all to the side, just like that. And it will be an excess of wire coming down to here. Just cut it off and then that leaves you with this little ledge, which we're gonna tin in a minute. And then that is what we're gonna be grounding to the pot casing. By tin. I mean like this so we're just going to put a layer of solder on it which just makes it a lot easier to connect to the pot casing exactly the same with both pickups There we go. Okay, now unfortunately the customer hasn't sent me the body for the Telecaster, so he has sent a couple of photos, so I'm gonna have to do a bit of guesswork where I'm gonna place the wires because of the routing. Um, but I think I've got it figured out and I'm gonna leave a bit of slack in the pickup wires should he need to fiddle around with it himself. So like I say, nice and simple. Your bridge pickup goes to the top two controls. Those are your net controls and your bridge goes to the bridge control. So we're gonna do the neck first. We're gonna put the inner cloth wire, push the cloth back, and we're gonna solder that into the input of the volume control. I'll try and turn it around, just to be able to get a better view from here. There we go. Clean your soldering tip. Perfect, and then we just need to ground the outer braid to the pot casing. So that little ledge that we've tinned earlier, we can just apply some heat and solder it into onto the pot. Nice and easy. Apply the heat, reflow the solder. There we go, just flowing a little bit more if need be. Thank you. 
there we go so that's the neck pickup done like i say i've just left a little bit of slack in these wires so i'm not entirely sure without having the body here it's quite difficult to guess but i haven't looked at a few photos looks all good and we're going to do exactly the same with the bridge wire the bridge pickup excuse me so we're going to hit the the inner cloth wire goes to the input lug again so i'm going to turn that around which is this lug here the outer lug So reheat the solder, connect the signal wire, and then exactly as before, we're just going to ground the pickup, the outer braid to the pot. They're all good. So what I will do at the end when the switch and everything is in is use some cable ties just to tie all the wires together so that the, the customer can get it nicely into the routing. So now the final thing we've got to do is just connect the, put in the toggle switch and connect that to the volume controls. Okay, so I've got the switch in. Uh, as you can see, I've just used a little bit of rubber tubing just to protect the the pick up there as the braided wire covers it goes through again this is mainly due to the routing of the customer's body so i've got all the wires coming through here i've got a, a cable tie just to keep them nice and close knit and it's exactly the same as with the pickup so the reason why i put these color codes on earlier was for this exact reason so that i don't get lost and put the wrong wire to the wrong volume pot so for my color coding red is the neck and blue is the bridge and yellow which is all the way to the right end of the screen here is for the jack so as you can see exactly the same i've cut the braid back i've twisted the braids together i've just cut them off to create this little ledge which is what we're going to ground to the pot casing and the inner cloth wire is going to the middle lug of each volume control so i'll just lower the camera a bit there we go. So we'll do the neck first. Just push that cloth back. There we go. And we're just gonna reheat the solder on the middle lug. And we're going to pop that in there. Let it cool. Just like that. And then we're just going to tin that braid again, as we did with the pickups. And then we're just going to solder that to the pot casing again, exactly as we did with the pickups.
just like that and exactly the same with the bridge wire we're going to put the inner cloth wire push the cloth back and solder the signal wire to the middle lug of the volume sorted and then we're just going to exactly the same as we've just done tin that braid and we're going to ground that to the pot casing like that there we go so that's the bridge done the last thing we need to do is just connect the jack socket uh, but the first thing I'm gonna do before that is just use another cable tie to keep all these wires together and central again this is due to the routing of the tele deluxe I'll just keep all these wires nice and close together we should have no issues whatsoever. When he's screwing it back down, because it does happen, especially with a strap, you've got all your pickups and everything in, and it's a bit of a nightmare to fit into the cavity. Just one of the joys of guitar wiring. Okay, cool. So the final thing we're gonna do is just connect the jack socket and then it's ready to pack up and send back to the customer. Okay, so for the jack, exactly the same as uh, theoretically as everything else. So the outer braid is the ground, which we need to connect to the ground lug of the jack, which is this one, the inner ring. That's the ground and the inner cloth wire, the signal wire, we're going to uh, solder into the output, which is this lug. So as you can see here, if I just move this back into the picture, I've used some rubber tubing here just to be uh, covering the braid that's running between all the pots because when everything's screwed down what you don't want is for the the ground the outer braid to come into contact with any of these lugs like if it was to if the braid was to hit the lug the tone pot here where my finger is that would short out the tone control likewise if it was to hit the inputs of either the volume pots you'd uh, have no sound either so that's the reason for the rubber tubing so what we're going to be doing now is as per previous to the braid wire, we're just going to cut away a bit like a surgeon cutting up the trousers of a patient. Just going to remove the, cut up the braid. And these are quite blunt, so bear with me. Just like that. Just cut a little bit more. 
There we go. And just cut off the excess, leaving you with the little ledge, which is what will thread through the ground lug. <laughs> this is my t-shirt, by the way. Okay, again, I'm just going to feed a little bit of a snippet of rubber tubing back up that up the the braid, and I'll show you why in a sec. So we're going to push back the cloth wire. I'm going to thread that through to the hot lug of the jack. Bend it around. Oh, you don't have to bend it around if you don't want to. It's just the way I do it. Helps create a better connection. I'm going to solder that into place. Let it cool. Push the cloth back down. And that rubber tubing you've just pushed up, you can push that all the way down to protect it. And then use your heat gun to shrink that down. Okay, I'm just going to turn it around actually for a better view for you guys. Okay. So, using that ledge we created earlier, we're just going to bend that down. Thread it through the ground lug like so, twist it over so it's nice and secure. And just solder that into place. There we go, that's everything done. So we've done the switch, the pickups, the pots. Actually, I'm just gonna bend these back down a bit. You don't want them sticking out too much. And the jack, there you go, everyone. That's how you wire a Telecaster Deluxe. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, actually, the one thing that I can't do, which you do need to do. So I'm gonna send this back to the customer tomorrow morning and he's gonna have to connect the main ground wire coming from the bridge. As it's on his guitar, I can't do it for him. Uh, and then your ground from the bridge, you just need to put anywhere onto ground. So the best place, uh, the nearest place as well, is probably going to be the neck volume control. So just solder your ground wire to the back of the pot casing. Screw everything back down. Plug it in. You're ready to go. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, sorry it's been the first video in a very long time. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to get in touch below. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>